Hello and welcome. This is a follow-up video on the previous one on principal component analysis. We received a lot of requests from our learners that we want a little more intuition behind principal component analysis, and they also asked for some hands-on examples. So before we go to the hands-on example, let's, let's start the intuition piece. So in case you've not watched the previous video, I'm providing a link in the description. It might make sense to watch that video first and then come to this one. Because principal component analysis is a very powerful topic. It's, it's highly respected in the industry and it's very much relevant for any data set where you're dealing with large number of features. Just to summarize a few critical points from principal component analysis. First of all, principal component analysis is a transformation on the data. Principal component analysis is applicable in scenarios where your data comes with features which are correlated, which means there is some redundant information. You're capturing same information multiple times in different columns. Second, we get as many PCs as the number of eligible features in our data. So if we start with 10 features, we'll get 10 principal components. Why did I write eligible features? Because principal component analysis only works on numerical data. That's where correlations make sense. So if you get categorical data along with the other features, Categorical data would not be participating in the principal component analysis. Now, the question that arises is, if the original data had 10 features and I'll be extracting 10 PCs, where are we doing dimension reduction? So we'll answer that as well. Let's first understand the third point. Each principal component is a linear combination of the existing features, same as eligible features. So we are not dropping the original features in case of principal component analysis. This is the most common misconception a lot of people have that PCA is dimension reduction, so we probably drop the features. No, we don't drop the original features. We cannot, but we drop the principal components which are relatively less important. And how do we decide which PC is important, which is not? It's based on something that's known as the eigenvalue. Once again, if you watched the previous video, you would have already attained enough intuition about these things. That's where I emphasize, if you've not seen that, you may go ahead and watch it once and then come back to this video. It'll make all the sense to you. Let's further build on this. Let's have a look at the data. So let's say this is some data about the people who have been selected by some of the top companies in the field of data science. And these are the topics when somebody enrolls for a program, they get to study a number of topics. So let's say this one here that you see represents statistics. It could be something to do with basics of statistics or fundamentals. It could be something to do with distributions here in T5. It could be something to do with hypothesis testing here in T6. Likewise, this shade of blue, let's say this represents the comfort with various visualization tools. So let's say this talks about Tableau and this talks about Power BI. Similarly, let's say these two features, T7 and T8, because they get the same color code, they represent a topic relative to programming. It could be the fundamentals of programming and this could be data structures. So imagine there are various topics that people have studied in a course and we have the data belonging to people who've been selected by the top companies. If you were to prepare for replacements naively, you would probably give equal weightage to everything. You will say that all the topics are equally important and I want to study everything starting from T1, T2, T3. We have up to 15 topics here, let's say. So you'd say all 15 topics are equally important. But is that so? We have some intuitive understanding that these topics could be relative. If we apply principal component analysis on this data, if we had 15 features to begin with, we'll end up getting 15 principal components. And each principal component would be a linear combination of the original features. But the way PCs are extracted, PC1 will always be more important compared to the rest of the PCs in that order. So PC2 would be the second most important principal component. PC3 would be the third most important principal component, so on and so forth. Now you just have to go one level deeper. We are saying for the people who got very good placements in their dream companies, we have their data, we have their scores as to how they performed on each of these topics based on the assessment conducted by the recruiters. We've translated that into principal components. Let's say this is how the original data was. We've just sorted it by the color coding. So we know the loadings or the coefficients associated with each of the topics. TCA does that. TCA comes up with the loadings. These are called eigenvectors. So now you know the eigenvectors associated with each of the columns, each of the original features. Collectively, you know they make sense together as a topic because 
they are relative to each other. It's your knowledge of the subject matter that tells you that these topics are related. This is not the sequence in which these questions were asked. All you have to figure out now is if PC1 is most important because the PCs are extracted in the descending order of importance, we got to a point where PC1 is more important, we know. But what contributes more to PC1? Discarding the signs, let's just look at the absolute values. You'll realize that the weights given to T3, T9, and T12 are relatively high. Now, this tells you that if you want to prepare smartly for your placement, you probably should be concentrating on these topics a little more compared to the rest of the topics. Please note somewhere, maybe if you extract PC2 as well, you may find some other topics have got a higher weightage. And it depends on to what extent you want to work. An ideal scenario would be that you have a good hold on every single topic. But if you want to be a little smart in picking your choices and you want to separate the vital few from the trivial many, you may want to concentrate on the ones which matter the most to the top companies. So PCA, from a takeaway perspective, helps you prioritize what you should be focusing on. If you started with 15 features, it is quite likely that after transformation, you only use three principal components because those will take care of around 80-85% of the explained variance ratio. And then you just concentrate on what matters to each principal component. If PC1 is most important, then what is more important in PC1? Not all 15 features have the equal importance here. Some have more, some have less. Similarly, you look at PC2 and find out what are its characteristics. The term eigen means characteristics. So these are called eigenvectors. They represent the characteristics of a principal component. This was a short tutorial. The next video that we are going to come up with is a complete hands-on video on principal component analysis. So if you're looking for a detailed example, you may just want to catch up on the previous video and this video, put them together and be all set for the next one, which is a hands-on example, a detailed hands-on example, which will be really meaningful for you if you've been struggling to understand this topic. Appreciate your time. Thank you.